Hi everybody, my name is Noam Brezis. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to talk about AI for business. So AI is a huge buzz, but the question is how can you use AI to really improve your business? We're going to go over the different steps that you need to go through. So first of all, short introduction, I'm the CTO and co-founder of Pecan. I'm going to talk more about what's the Pecan and what's the product that we've built. I have a PhD in computational neuroscience from Tel Aviv University. So I did a lot of brain research and understanding how families of neurons interact in order to take decisions. This was extremely interesting and working a lot with data. I consulted for many companies here in Israel on how to build infrastructure and how to analyze masses of data. So McKinsey did a very interesting survey in 2020 to understand where companies stand at the moment with AI and what they do with it. So 50% of the companies said that they're already using AI for at least one business question. You can see here the main areas, and this is, you know, there are so many areas because that's the beauty of AI, right? It's not just one specific thing that you can answer. It's on one question. It's on very different areas. So it starts from product, service operations, marketing, human resources, supply chain management, all over. And this is very, very exciting. Now, what they saw in the survey, you know, they asked the businesses, how well it was working for them. And they didn't talk about, you know, metrics of the model. That wasn't the question. It's how much percentage their business saw an improvement. And you can see here the white areas is when they had an increase of more than 10% in their KPI or in their revenue. And you can see here light blue is between 6 and 10% and blue is beneath 5%. So you can see that actually having high value, which is above 10%, is not as easy. And you need to really know what you're doing when you're using these AI models. So of course, this is, you know, it, on one hand, this is very exciting because we see that, you know, more and more companies really see value. But this is also, you know, uh, 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 explana uh, uh, an exclamation mark telling us that you need to be careful and really know your stuff. So what do we need to know and how we're gonna build our AI model? So first of all, you need to have a team and it's not just about having good data scientists, that's not the story. You need to have the whole team there. So you need to have your business, you need to have your data science, and then you need to have you know, your uh, development team working very closely in order to have on one side, understanding what you want to do, then building the model, and finally having this in production and having the code running out there. So once you have the team, it's now about defining the business question. And this is just a bunch of, you know, uh, uh, very classic models. So if we're talking about customer journey, you can have on one side at the beginning when you're talking about user acquisition where you want to really quickly have a prediction of high valuables these customers are going to be and if it's worth you know the effort then if, if we're talking about monetization it's really to see conversion promotion optimizations understanding how we create money from what you already have and just improve and have better quality and finally, if we're talking about retention, it's to understand who are the customers that are going to churn or decrease, have a decreased activity and do manipulations in order, or in order to actually uh, put them back in the business and keep them as customers. So all of these, you know, are, are very classic examples. If we're looking more about operational efficiency, of course, the math forecasting is a huge uh, use case very, very popular. So once you have, you know, your team, you have your business question, they can start and work. And how, what are they going to do? First step, have the data ready. They're going to organize them. So you'll need to have data from various, you know, uh, data sources combined in just one pool of data. And once you have that, 
it's about working all the pre-processing of the data. And this is something that, you know, we're talking more and more about. This is around 80% of the work is to have the data ready. Because remember these AI models, they can't work with a bunch of tables. They need to have one table, which is very well formatted. And this is something that's complicated to do. So what are the steps? First, you need to have the data needs to be combined. You know, you need to have these keys and you need to have the data structured. So this is going to be the first step. Now you're going to, you can, you know, add additional external data, which is really, really important. And we see how valuable it is when you're going to create these models in coding and cleansing. So we're not working, you know, with raw data. We need to have the data clean. We need to be imputation, be sure we don't have missing values. And finally, very important steps are the feature selection, feature engineering. So our AI models, they don't know how to take raw data. They need the data to be very much, you know, uh, what we call feature engineering is taking the data and make sense out of it. So think for example, and I wanna give, you know, a quick example of what's feature engineering. If we're talking about a customer journey and you have the transactions of the customer, it's a huge question, how are you gonna push this inside a model? So remember the model doesn't know how to take many records and just you know make sense of them. It doesn't know what to do. It's gonna need a specific value. So this is where feature engineering you know, uh, is a lot about taking data and make sense of it. And finally, we're gonna to get to, you know, to the modeling and action part, which are, you know, it's once you have your data ready, now you can find the best algorithm. This is what most of people think when we're talking about modeling or, uh, you know, data science work. It's really finding the best algorithm. That's really just one small part. It's then understanding how well that model performs. And that's the evaluation part. It's a very tricky one, actually. And I'll tell you why. Because even if you have a good model and you're pretty sure it's good, what does it mean even a good model? At the end of the day, why are we creating models? Because we're going to act. We're going to do something, right? We're going to use them in order to have improvement in our business. So evaluation of the model needs to be very well um, aligned with what we want to do in our business. So it's not just that, you know, a very large evaluation, it needs to be very much specific to the action. This is why I was talking, it's so important to have this communication inside your team with both business aspects and data science. And they need to talk, they need to understand how they're gonna to work together. And once you have your model there, you're gonna have it in production. This is gonna, you're gonna use your uh, DevOps team and you're gonna have your model out there in production. And finally, very important, you're gonna look at the impact and monitor and check that the model is performing well all the time. So these are the steps. Now you can imagine that this takes a lot of time, right? For, I can tell you from our customers that when they did this process, it took between at least a minimum six months and sometimes it can take even more than a year. So this is, you know, how can you scale? There's so many questions that you want to answer and or manipulations that you want to do with AI, but with, if this is the time that it takes, it's just too slow, right? So this is a quick overview of what's actually the Beacon platform. And you can see that it's on one hand combining data and the business question. And so when we were thinking, you know, how we think data science needs to be done, we just thought that we need to have a platform where a business analyst or a data analyst, which doesn't need to understand, you know, statistics and modeling, but just knows data and business questions and now can combine the two in order to create the models. So I'm gonna just quickly, you know, show you how it's done inside the platform. So first step, of course, you need to connect your data. So we have these connectors from various technologies where you're just, you know, gonna have your connector and now you have your data connected. Now, you can even have data from various technologies combined together inside the Pekin platform. So we have both servers and files. And once you have the data connected, now it's about the business question. 
And for example, you can see here various use cases and questions for customer behavior area. For example, lifetime value, high value customers, identifying churn, et cetera, et cetera. And if I'm gonna just you know, click on one of them, I'm gonna go inside what we call the builder, where it's actually a place where we're building the models. And you can see here that all we have to do is just you know, connect to the data and drag our tables down into the canvas. And once we've done that, of course, we have some configuration, you know, that we need to do very simple steps and our model is ready to be trained. And once we're going to press on train the model, that's where the process takes around an hour or two and we have our model ready. So everything's going to happen, right? Pre-processing of the data, all the different steps that we saw earlier. And now we can really understand how well the model performs. And it's not, you know, about a high complicated measurements. It's rather looking really at the predictions and what actually happened. And now you can quickly identify where, you know, and how well the model performs. And of course, you can know, you can drill down and see now, you know, for each of your groups, how well the model is performing and have the predictions out there. So this was, you know, really a quick overview of the platform so you can better understand how we see, you know, building models in real life as quick and as automated as possible. On a final note, I want to thank you very much for listening to the session. I hope you had a good time. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. Have a good day.